And verily we revealed, we sent revelation and we revealed to the mother of Musa, give the milk and suckled your boy, give him as much milk as he wants. And if and when you become afraid for his safety, then put him in the river and don't fret, don't be afraid. Verily, we're going to return him back to you and we're going to make him from those who are messengers. So when she put the child in the river, some of the members of the household of Fir'aun, they picked the child up out of the river and they did that so that Musa would become an enemy to them and a cause of their sorrow and animosity. Verily Fir'aun and his chief minister Haman, as well as their soldiers, all of them were evildoers, all of them were wrongdoers. The wife of Fir'aun, when the baby was brought to her, she said, this child is going to be a cooler of our eyes. Cooler of my eye? and a cooler of your eye, Ya Fir'aun. It may be that he's going to benefit us or we can take him as a son and they didn't realize what they were doing. That the heart of the mother of Musa salam, became empty. When she came to realize that Musa is in the hands of Fir'aun, she was about to simply go and knock on the door of Fir'aun and says, I want my child back. Right. So Musa salam, is not brought up in his mother's home. His stepfather is Fir'aun and his stepmother is Asya. Being brought up in the home of Fir'aun, of a man who proclaimed himself to be God. Long ago there lived a great woman. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned in the hadith where he said the best women in the world were four and from them was the wife of Pharaoh Asiya bint Muzahim she lived in the time of Musa the time of Moses in the time of the pharaohs Asiya bint Muzahim lived in a bad time she lived in a very difficult time she lived in a house filled with sins kufr and shirk her husband was who her husband was Fir'aun, the one who used to say, I am your Lord, the Most High. He used to gather the children of Israel and say to them, do I not own the kingdom of Egypt and these rivers that flow below me, do you not see? This was the husband of Asiya, one of the four greatest women to set foot in this world. When the basket of Musa arrived at the bank of the river near the palace, it was Asiya who took him to Fir'aun. And she pleaded with Pharaoh saying, A pleasure to my eye and yours. Which he replied, La. No, a comfort and a pleasure for your eye only. As for me, no. Me, never. Asiya, she pleaded with Pharaoh when she brought Musa. And she said, Perhaps he may benefit us or we could take him as a son. And then Allah says, And they didn't feel anything. Meaning they didn't had no idea of what was to come of Musa become a, becoming a prophet in the future. So when Asiya saw Musa السلام, she instantly fell in love with him and this baby that fell into her hands was even more special because Asiya السلام, was unable to have children. Musa السلام, is raised in this palace of Fir'aun and Asiya dedicates herself to Musa السلام, as if she is indeed his mother. She raises him, she continues to love him. She brings in the mother of Musa السلام, not knowing that she is the mother of Musa السلام, to be a wet nurse for Musa alayhi salam. As for what took place between Asiya and Musa in the palace, we do not know. So we say Allahu A'lam, Allah knows best. After the event of when Musa accidentally killed someone, he fled to an eastern region called Madian. Asiya, at that moment, she lost her adopted son. For 10 years, he was away. And then Musa came back. And he was calling to the religion of Allah. He was calling to the truth. So Musa السلام, had just invited him to Allah, had showed him the signs of Allah, and in his obstinacy, 
and in his arrogance and pride, he goes back to his people, makes a grand scene, calls everyone there, and says, I am your Lord, the Most High. Now just imagine the difficulty that Asya is in right now. A woman living with a man who believes himself to be God. And she knows, of course, all of his imperfections because she's his wife. And here, Pharaoh is making this grand call, stretching around the streets and saying, I am Allah, I am your God. Asiya was in that difficulty in that moment. When Musa is continuing in his challenging of Pharaoh, Pharaoh, of course, he has his backup, his support. And the support for Pharaoh were his magicians. And the way that he was able to convince people that he was Allah, he was God, is through his magicians. Pharaoh, in his dialogue with Musa, السلام, have you come, O Musa, السلام, to expel us from our land? with your magic, O Musa, fear of loss of power, loss of control. This is all it's about really, isn't it? So let there be between us and you an appointment, and that people will be gathered in the early morning. Asiya alayhi salam is still there in the background right now, and so then they gather on the day. Magicians and Musa alayhi salam. Ya Musa, either you're the first one to throw your stick, or we be the first ones to throw the sticks. And Musa said, no, you be the first ones to throw your sticks. And then they threw their sticks on the floor. And they began to move around. And Musa salam became scared and panicky. They were like rods that were swimming in the streets. And then Allah says, and throw down what's in your hands, and it will devour and eat up whatever they've just made. Asiya salam would have been right there with Pharaoh, watching the spectacle, watching the whole thing happening. And when Musa salam, his, his stick becomes a serpent and it devours the other sticks, they all saw that, they all witnessed that, including Asiya salam. What happens next? Allah says the magicians fall down in prostration. What does Pharaoh say? Qal, you believe in him before I've given you permission to believe in him? <laughs> they said back to Pharaoh, so just decree whatever you wish to decree. Meaning just do whatever you want to do, because all you can do is limited to the life of this world. Asiya immediately believed in the message that was given uh, to Musa Islam. She immediately believed in Tawheed and she started to practice the religion of Musa Islam on a personal level without Fir'aun recognizing that she was amongst the monotheists and she was amongst those that were following the message of Musa Islam. Why? You know, what sense of betrayal would he feel if he saw his own wife accepted that message of Musa Islam? As time goes on, however, there is an incident that would, that would lead to Asiya coming out and exposing her Islam. And that was the incident that is known as the incident of the hairdresser of the daughter of Fir'aun. One day, the hairdresser was brushing the hair of Pharaoh's daughter. One day, the brush fell from her hand and she stooped down to retrieve it. And uh, she was hiding her faith. Everyone was hiding their faith out of fear. But at that moment when she dropped the brush and she went down to retrieve it, she said, Bismillah in the name of Allah, and she picked up the brush. Oh, she forgot. Someone was listening. Who was listening? The daughter of Pharaoh. She said, what did you say? She said, I said, Bismillah. She said, do you mean my father? She said, no, I meant Allah. My Lord, your Lord, and the Lord of Pharaoh. Allah, Rabbul Alameen. The daughter of Pharaoh said, I'll tell my father. She said, go tell him. Now the wife of Pharaoh was also hiding her faith. But the first to expose their faith or their belief was the mashita. This means hairdresser. This brave woman. 
So she said, go tell your father. And she was brought into the sitting of Pharaoh. Around him, who? His guards, his soldiers. Pharaoh looks at her and says, Mashita, do you have a Lord other than me? She says, yes, my Lord, your Lord, the Lord of everything. Pharaoh knows that the hardest thing for a mother to deal with is the, is the discomforts of her children. So he told the soldiers, go bring her children. They would barge into the house, children screaming and crying. Crying for who? Their mother, but where is she? She's being held by Pharaoh. They look at their mother. What can they do? How can they help? How they must be crying? How their mother feels? The moment is tense. Everyone is looking. Take back what you say. With one word, she can end all of this. But no, she loves Allah. She believes. When the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, journeyed to the heavens, in the seventh heaven, he smelt a beautiful aroma. So he asked the angel Jibra'il, what is this beautiful smell? He said, that's the scent of the mashita, the hairdresser of Pharaoh and her children. It is at that moment that Asya, as she saw the cruelty of Fir'aun, and she saw the bravery of that woman. So Asya sees that and Asya says, you know what? If Fir'aun is like that, and this woman had the guts to stand up to, up to him and that courage, she says, then I'm also going to go up to him and stand up to him. So she walks up to Fir'aun and she says, yeah, Fir'aun, I have disbelieved in you. I don't care what you're going to do. And I believe in the Lord of Musa and the Lord of Harun, the Lord of all of the worlds. How can a wife disbelieve in her husband? He wouldn't kill her right away because it would be a bad decision politically. She's from the royal family. He would talk with her first and dialogue with her and then he would become harsher. She had a palace. She had the best foods and the best clothes. But she sacrificed everything for the sake of Allah. She became an example for the people of faith, men and women. Pharaoh would beat Asiya. She was patient. He harmed her, but she endured. He tortured her and she was steadfast. Rather, she would say to him, I believe in the Lord of Musa and Harun. Do you disbelieve in me? She would say, yes. I will expel you from the palace. She would say, do what you want. I will punish you, Asiya. Do whatever you want. This was her attitude towards him. But she was patient. But Aoun said, do you know what I'm going to do to you? She said, I know and I don't care. I have rejected you and I don't care. And Fir'aun drags her to the desert, ties her down, deprives her of water, deprives her of food, deprives her of her dignity, her honor. And the daughters of Fir'aun from the concubines and from the other wives are laughing at her. No, she has no support, no human being there that loved her, supported her because Musa Islam was not there. And while that's going on, she looks up to the heavens and she says, Oh Allah, build for me with you a palace in Jannah and replace this palace that I've sacrificed for your sake with a palace in Jannah. So Allah opened up the skies and she was able to see her palace in Jannah and she laughed. And Fir'aun said to the guards, look how crazy this woman is. And she laughed and she laughed and she laughed until Fir'aun got frustrated. He said, go to the highest cliff and push off a boulder so that would smash her body to pieces. But Allah did not give Fir'aun that pleasure. Allah took her soul before the boulder landed on her body. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had taken her for himself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given her a palace in Jannah as she requested. She was a woman, all of the things that you would imagine every woman to ever want, all of the niceties of everything, the clothing and the the shoes and the handbags and all of that stuff. Asiya alayhi salam had all of that and more. So what is it that she had to give up then? We sometimes cannot even give up the small things in our life and we are all expecting heaven. Asiya alayhi salam that Allah made as an example until the day of judgment for all those who believe gave up everything, everything for Allah. Just a few points about Asiya in conclusion then. Point number one, Asiya alayhi salam was a woman who had insight, perception, is having an illuminated heart. 
and that heart can see the apparent of things and the hidden of things. And Allah gave that as a gift to Asya. She could see the deception of Fir'aun. Number two, Asya did not allow herself to be defined by her circumstances. Asya was living in a home of someone who believed himself to be God. And she believed in Allah and she was devout and pious and obedient. She could do it, that means you could do it. Asya, point number three, had resolve. And in that resolve and bravery and tenacity and spirit, she was close to Allah. Know Allah, be close to Allah and Allah will know you, Allah will keep you. And you will find Allah in front of you. Point number four, Asya chose Akhira over dunya. Even though she had the trappings of this life and the best of everything material, that was not enough to keep her where she was. So all the things, the industries, the manufactured women and the men and the clothing and all the gimmicks they give us and living in a world of consumption and consumerism, we just chase the world. Asiya alayhi had to break the status quo. And she realized, no, the truth, the truth of the matter is that happiness is in the next life.